Hello everyone, welcome back to Blender, where we are working on the Enterprise J. A Just kind of a little bit of a heads up, I know that this episode is getting out kind of late for those of y'all that are following the schedule. I did say that the schedule may be a little bit, have to be a little bit of adjusted because of, uh, you know, I was wanting to try to work on getting this done within a certain number of episodes. And I got some good news and bad news. The bad news is, is that I'm not going to be able to meet that. I might end up having to actually go a little bit over the 30 episodes that I was hoping to probably do. Therefore, expanding this series a little bit longer. Uh, you know, but, and the reason being why about, you know, we'll get into that in just a minute. I mean, part of it was you know, finding these, you know, wonderful, wonderful orthos, you know, with the, you know, from uh, Doug Drexler that he was, that he posted on his Facebook page, uh, you know, just to kind of get an idea of the look of this. But that is the bad news. <clears throat> Excuse me. The good news is, is that, uh, actually, I don't know, it depends on how you take it. Um, I see it as kind of a bit of a good news. But uh, the overall deal is, the good news is, is we got a much better model right now. And the reason being, well, I know I got to do a little bit more work, but the reason being is because I decided while, you know, in the last little video I did or the update, I said that I was needing to, I was making a mad dash on trying to get as much of this ship modeled as possible so I could try to fit underneath the 30 episodes and I was doing that but in the process of doing it I was encountering problem after problem after problem and you know with the mesh with the edge loops with you know the way that everything was going and it really wasn't quite working I mean I ended up having to really kind of I was mostly repairing in the process of repairing things, you know, I was fixing more stuff than, than I was actually making any kind of progress. And so that was really slowing me down, you know, and so what I decided to do then is I decided to make a whole new mesh, or at least for this portion right here. And that particular mesh, as you can see, when we go into edit mode is a lot cleaner it is a lot more organized mesh and you know it's you know it's how what can i say I, i've learned a lot you know through trial and error and also through looking at other people doing their stuff and tutorials and things online from the time when i first started making this you know many many months ago till now so using that i went ahead and i've created a much better mesh and the reason of how I did this is that you know when you're making a mesh there's two different ways that you can that you can make the mesh I the way that I made the old mesh and I'll go ahead and let me see if I can find that real quick and bring that up I still have it I think it's over is it over here no nope. yeah. okay there we go there was the one that I was working on before I still got some details but um, you know I was looking at this one I mean, the way that I've kind of, that I really mostly made this mesh was, is that I created a very basic shape, which was, and I don't can't remember if I did this on screen or not, but I started off with a mesh of a circle. Uh, let me go ahead and I'll show y'all what I'm talking about here. It shouldn't take too long. So, so let's say like, okay, I get here, I go into add mesh and I do a circle. Let's see, let's go ahead and so, so I have the mesh like that. I would go into edit mode and then what I would do is I would select vertices, go into a top view mode and I would, you know, not have the picture of the image, uh, you know, oops, um, you know, I'd have a, I'd have the image and then I would sit there and extrude and I'd move these along forward top. You know, so let's say like this was it, I'd be 
moving it along until I got it just right. And then I would extrude it, move it to there, extrude it, move it to there, extrude it, move it to there. And I would just do it over and over and over and over and over again. And it really kind of works, or at least in my opinion, from my experience, it really kind of works when you're doing with organics, something that's kind of a bit organic, uh, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, well, you know, organic like you and me and everything and because the ship was so organic I tried to do that but that really wasn't quite working and that's what ended up giving us this particular mesh right here and a lot of the edge loops I mean weren't looking nice I mean that's why we get like a lot of these right here where you know you have this thing here I don't know I'm still trying to figure out how that happened and you got these lines these edges that are running off everywhere in random directions and you know when you go into shader mode you see all these little weird i don't know if y'all can see it but like right there's a little weird anomaly where it looks like it kind of dips in a little bit yeah you can see it right there it's right there and right there those little anomalies uh, you know it was all over the ship you know right there is another little anomaly and so i was going through and i was fixing every, every time i was you know, counter one of those things I was trying to fix and it was just taking too long. So with that being said, with this new one, which is right here, what I did is I took a different approach where it's still extruding, but what I did is I started with the basic shape and I extruded the entire shape. And by doing that, it tends to, no. Okay, there we go wonder why it wasn't letting me go in edit mode it would it would always maintain you know to try to carry on the edge loops that was set by the original base mesh or base uh yeah mesh along the entire lines of the ship so if i wanted to go in and add you know an edge loop there it would run it for the most part pretty much the way i want it so if i wanted to put it there it would run it pretty much for the most way i want it I mean, there's a couple of times that there were a couple of areas where there are some tries that I triangles that I couldn't quite avoid. So, you know, you got to deal with those. Uh, those do tend to kind of mess up the, you know, like right here, there's a little bit of a triangle. Wait, is that a triangle? No, that's not a triangle. There was a triangle back here before. Did I fix it? I think I might have fixed it. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, whoops. Yeah, I think I might have fit. Okay, never. Oh, no. Okay, yeah, there is a triangle. It's right there. Okay, it's just that that goes there. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm thinking right. Yeah, there was a triangle right there. Now that's kind of turned into almost a quad, but there was a triangle there. So if I tried putting an edge loop, you know. Oh, well, yeah, I must have turned it into a quad. So now everything's, everything's hunky dory. If I didn't have that there, if I tried putting something along here, it would stop right at that triangle but anyways uh, but yeah the method that i did to do that like i said it's just you know real quick once again i do almost the same thing i'm entered in front mode i would go into add mesh and i would do a cube so i'd expand the cube so i'd do the cube view from the top there we go and let me I'll tell you what let me move this to another empty layer there we go go okay there we go well it's not quite empty but ah. anyways so what i did is like i would subdivide it you know one two three like that boom and i'm just doing this real quick so i would to expand along the back edge i would press e to extrude y along the axis move it out scale it up right to there extrude move it back scale it down to them fit if i needed to adjust each one of these little edges i would you know select them and as long as they're moving along the, the correct axis i want to move it along there i could either do g you know hold down g and then x to go along the x or select that Control e and do an edge slide so if i could select both there we go make sure that you're selecting both vertices edge slide and i could move that entire oh you know what that's why there we go now let's try it 
So we're there. So I would go, you know, select, extrude along the Y, move it to there, scale it up, extrude Y, scale it down. If I wanted to move this, I would select those, control E, edge slide, and I can either slide it or G, you know, and I would do that. And then at once, like if I get to the pylons and I wanted to move the pylons, uh, let me do one more extrude there like that. And then I would do this, you know, and I'd select these pylons and whoops, and then I would move them along there and along there and scale those down and everything. And so therefore I would always maintain the edge loops and it makes it look a lot cleaner. So I did that thing, but with the entire model. So let me delete that. So going back into here, nope, not there, wrong layer. There we go. Got a much cleaner mesh. Um, there are some new detail. There's some details on here that because it was cleaner mesh, I was able to get into. I need to fix this little area here, but I might not be messing with it too much because it's actually covered by the saucer section. But I was able to get a lot of the de a lot of details that I didn't have in the other mesh. Like as you can see, the secondary hull is smoothed in and in a pretty good fashion too into the lower pylons, part of the pylons. I've managed to get the front portion here where. On the picture, yeah, right there, it looks like those are windows. So I'm going to be modeling windows into there. And that's probably, given the size of the ship, using my little man, that's probably about maybe uh, two or maybe even three decks. Uh, but the decks, you know, are probably going to be a lot taller. Uh, but, you know, that also looks like those are windows there. But I might still go with the route of putting some sensors inside there. Uh, once again, kind of like the Enterprise, you know, the Enterprise D has those sensors all around the saucer section. So I got that in there. I got, I went ahead and modified this back portion based on the the top view of, of it. It looks like that there's a bit of a uh, recess inside here. And if you see even in the back view, it looks like this piece right here. You could actually see some of the internal workings of from the back. Or it might not be internal workings. It might be just, you know. But there's some extra little details off in the back. So I threw that in there. I started working on some details of the recessed shuttle bay. And I've actually put this in. I've decided I was going to go ahead and go with some of the ideas ideas that Doug Drexler had I me. Mean, this is his ship that he designed. So I'm going to go by some of the ideas that he had in there. I'm borrowing this little, that's what that, that's what that is. I'm kind of borrowing this little detail here to add those on, you know, as something a little bit decorative to make it look a little bit more organic, but at the same time, it still protects shuttles and small ships from docking into it. Uh, but at the same time, with that being said, I'm still going to try to model. I need to make this area here a bit more pronounced because once again, as I mentioned in last in previous episodes, I'm going to try to modify the bottom of this to l resemble what we saw on screen. So we're going to see some extra, you know, little details here with the sensor dome, you know, with you know, to match what was seen on screen. And there's going to be like a little area there with at least that one window where Archer and Daniels was looking out. And I'm still going to keep the idea, even though I know this ship, his model didn't have it. I'm still going to keep the idea of having a secondary deflector because I just think that that kind of just works. It starts to seem like that, you know, every single ship, if they had a deflector dish there, they had a deflector dish right there, if at all possible. I know there were some exceptions, like the Akira class, which I'm working on another YouTube video. But for this particular ship, you know, like the uh, Intrepid, you know, Voyager, it had, you know, it had, uh, you know, deflector dish there and a deflector dish there and that smaller ship I can't think was called the Nova class I think it had the same thing so I think this ship would all, would also probably have that you know for redundant purposes you would have this deflector dish and if that goes out they would have that deflector dish and also plus if this thing did any kind of saucer separation 
which I have ideas. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I have ideas about how the saucer separation would happen. It would be necessary for them to have both of those. So let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look again with the whole model. Uh, you know, there have been, there. I have had a couple of issues. I don't know whether if I'm just having issues personally with the pictures, but it doesn't seem like that the the images that Doug Drexler released are up to scale for one another, and that's kind of been a bit of an issue, and I took it to, the pictures into Photoshop, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. As you can see, here I have everything matched up. The pylons are fitting up, you know, with the you know, the pylons are fitting up just nicely, as you can see right there. The nacelles, I mean, everything is almost a one-to-one, -one, uh, you know, almost translation of the actual ship. That's pretty darn close. I'm, you know, a couple little issues, but we'll tackle those a little bit later. But, but here on the side view, it's not quite matching up. I mean, I have it lined up from the front for the most part. You know, once again, there's still a couple little details I need to fix, and I could take care of those. Another thing is with the model is that because it has so many fewer edge loops, it's a lot easier to move things. Like this right here, if I want to just go ahead and move that, I just, you know, grab it, take it down, and voila, no problem. But getting a little bit distracted. But yeah, if you look on the side view, it's not quite matching up. So I took them into Photoshop a couple of times to try to try to get them to match up, but I can't seem to. And I don't know if that has anything to do with maybe just the type of, he may not have used like the same camera for the top view and the side view. He might do kind of like what I do, where I have, you know, several different cameras you know, several different cameras set up, but each one of them, because, you know, I might want to get a different look from the top, from the top here, as opposed to the front, their uh, focal distance is a little bit different, so therefore it kind of disrupts the perspective just, just ever so little, and that might be a possibility of what's going on. So with that, I'm just simply, really just using these images for reference and it's really been kind of helped me out especially since I've kind of made the decision a little earlier on or, or you know just recently that uh, it's I'm only going to try to make this about 90% accurate I mean I'm not going to make it 100% accurate but I'm going to try to make it as close as possible but there's just going to have to be some things that's going to be left up to you know my interpretation or to my imagination because this is a low poly model after all things he didn't modeled in there I mean it may not need it but you know like phaser strips there's no phaser strips on it but you know it may not need it but it tends to look a little bit more uh, you know recognizable to have the phaser strips on there I've always I've had my own idea for technology and I you know I might not put phaser strips on there I mean I'm still debating but something that I personally would like to see so I might add them in there just because I like to see it not because they weren't on the ship and uh, you know in other areas that you don't get a good look at like once again in this little area right here which I actually like the way that this turned out on this model a lot better you know this kind of just slowly, I don't know if y'all can see that, but that just kind of just, let me do this, there we go, you know, this just kind of just slowly just kind of caves in and blends in and goes into here, then this comes back out, need to do some cleaning up, but I'm still going to do some sort of uh, rear facing, I mean, I know it's not there because you don't see it in there, but feels like there just has to be something inside that little space. So I'm going to put in, for my own interpretation, that rear-facing uh, vantage viewpoint, which the one that I've already have won't work for this. You know, there it is right there. It won't quite work. So I'm going to have to modify it or something. Uh, and I decided to do these type of windows, by the way. I'm just not going to probably make them that consistent. 
and I'm going to try to model the entire atrium almost inside it rather than try to do textures. But anyways, uh, but yeah, this is just, um, I, I'm going to say quick update, but I'm pretty sure that I've already reached past my allotted time that I try to give myself to say it's a quick update, but I wanted to kind of let y'all know of what I've done on the next episode. I do plan on doing a lot of work on the actually on screen so those of y'all that are following along for tutorial purposes can kind of see my workflow and i want to try something a little bit different on you know on the way that i structure these episodes and i'm not going to try it on this episode first i'm going or the next episode of, of the enterprise j i'm actually going to be trying it on the uh key or yeah the akira class vessel which i'm hoping to try to get to y'all either on thursday if y'all are watching this you're probably watching this on thursday so i'll try to get it to y'all either later today or i might have it on to y'all on friday and with that being said i'm going to try to get those if any of y'all are watching the uh, bird of prey episodes uh, which I recommend y'all to take a look at that because, I mean, now that I got some of the wings and I'm starting to work on some of the texturing in it, it's really starting to look very good. Uh, but, you know, now I'll try to release that on Sunday, and then I'm gonna, then after that I'm going to try to slowly try to work back into a schedule to where the Enterprise J episodes are going to be released on Tuesday, the Akira will be released on Thursday, and the... Uh, oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Enterprise, the Enterprise is going to be released on Tuesdays. The Akira is going to be released on no, Bird of Prey is going to be released on Wednesday, Thursdays, and the Akira is going to be released on Sunday. So we'll try to get back onto that schedule. So I want to thank you all very much for tuning in. If you all have any suggestions or ideas or anything that you would like like to see just kind of go ahead and let me know inside the inside the comments i do look forward to them i thank you all for any of for all of y'all that have commented back i really appreciate it so thank you for watching this is b belt dan and i will see you in the next episode